the, I guess the ang anger and angst that we had was, we weren't unique, it was replicated around. How we, how we expressed it was different, but obviously um, around that time you did get, you know, the beginnings of punk and you, you see you've got a whole, um, I guess you've got a whole network starting to open up, um, which I'm, I'm not mentioning the early recordings, but I mean obviously all of a sudden you got Rough Trade suddenly appeared. We were the first actual single on Rough Trade. Did really, they'd licensed, no, second, the Taliban were the first. They'd licensed Augustus Pablo, did Metaliban, and then and then did us. So we were at the very beginning of a of a of a sort of a new kind of cartel, an independent cartel. We were working at a time when a lot of like-minded people were going. Things should be different. There should be different ways of doing things. There were promoters and people going well. Let's put different things on in clubs, and so we were lucky. We came in really on the coattails of punk when people were, you know, going. They put the damned on. They put the clash on the pistols, whoever it may be. But then it was a there was a whole other load of people going. Well, there must be more. There must be other interesting things. He'd just done a remix for somebody in America, and they didn't have any money but they managed to send him a whole sort of box, wooden box of really beautiful uh, Canadian smoked salmon. So, you know, it, it's, it's mad, but it's kind of like a whole other way of bartering. It's a cottage industry. But that's how I started off. You know, I, we talked about the bands that were in Sheffield when I started. It was, you know, Human League, Oz, Bank, you know, you know, it was all these bands. And we didn't really have much money, but you do stuff for each other. And that's how we started. And in some ways I feel as though we've gone a little bit back to that because of the, the sort of the digital world in which we live. So I, I see it quite a ritual. It's just a lot of it, a lot of music. But I feel partly responsible for that. I mean, the one message that we had when we were with was we, we were democratising those tools. We were saying that the tools are there for people to do what they want. They may not just be the obvious ones that the bloke in the shop is trying to sell you. It may be something else. Just the same way as you can get music out there, you can link, you can talk to people. It may not be the way somebody who works for a record company tells you to do it, or the people at X Factor tell you to do it, but you can do it. And I suppose in some ways we're, I always thought we were partly responsible for, for, for sort of banging the drum, for, for making recording cheaper. The same you could do it yourself, you could do it, you could get a four track. We started off with a four track, then we got an eight track. 24, we ended up the 24 track, we did it as we built up. But the point was, we felt that we always said that anyone could do it if they had the will. Back in the day, when you were talking, did we have a way of getting you know, our music onto soundtracks? We relied on our publishers for one thing, which was probably the wrong thing to do. But we also didn't really have any means, probably, or easy means to directly target and strategically go to places. Whereas now, you know, everything is quite transparent. Sometimes you just have to bang on a lot of doors before somebody opens one, that's all it is. And you got, I don't think there's any easy fix in those things. I think you've just got to keep trying. Um, and probably if I was in your position, or we're talking about back then, I would probably more, be more proactive in, in trying to find those things, yeah. But we were busy doing other stuff when we went out. We've got publishers, they'll do that, so. Um, but that's not the case anymore, you have to do a lot of things yourself. In the past, it was done at that sort of level where people didn't talk to the, the actual artists, they went to the, the more official channels of doing it. But that's not the case anymore. You know, I get, you know, I get emails and calls out of the blue about things. So obviously, just like yourself, there's people there trying to do it and they're just literally knocking on doors. You know. um, and, they were, and the people I talked to were really happy when they when they've done those things as well. We, the only thing we felt was stopping us being popular were people having access to it and, and hearing it. We thought, oh, I mean, probably mad because the stuff we were doing in the early days was mental. But you know, you go, if enough people can hear this, they won't be buying, you know, crap records. They'll be buying our records, and that's the belief you have. But that does go through all the way through in the sense that if you've got the belief in the, the thing that you're doing, I don't care who plays it or who shows it or where it's flagged up, the point is if you like it and you're proud of it and it represents you, then I couldn't care less where, where it is, you know, where, where it comes on really. So.